on the entrepreneur this week i was looking for a job because i wanted some experience before i started my own brand but of which i got i got a job i worked there but um my i didn't feel like i was able to grow as an individual or as a designer and on the second part i love trying things even when i was working i was still trying some businesses but it couldn't work when I'm working and I'm also doing some side hustles. So I just decided to go into business full time. Mukami Kingoria could pass for an ordinary customer at this shop in Langata. However, the 23-year-old is the brains behind this design that Stephen Oketch is currently working on. Mukami is the founder and head designer at MXM Africa. The venture specializes in the manufacturing of ornate and sophisticated designs inspired by art and African cultures. MXM Africa was established in 2012 while Mukami was still a first year art and design student at the University of Nairobi. First of all, I was looking for a job because I wanted some experience before I started my own brand. But of which I got, I got a job, I worked there, but um, my, I didn't feel like I was able to grow as an individual or as a designer. So that led me to, I felt like I needed to find a platform where I can push myself to the limit and do my best. So that pushed me to start my brand and yeah. And also design is a very personal aspect. Art and design are as, uh, personal things for creatives. So. Working underneath someone doesn't really give you the space. Mukami would establish MXM Africa with an initial investment of 80,000 Kenya shillings. This amount would be used to purchase a sewing machine, fabric, paying the tailor as well as for branding purposes. The company specializes in the designing and manufacturing of clothes, scarves, bags, pillows, cups, and plates. I'm able to offer high quality. I use high quality fabrics. I use high quality cuts. And also the finishing is very spectacular. Secondly, I am very focused on sustainability. So every piece that comes, you know, when you give your outfits to the tailor, there's the scraps that come out of it. So I either use the scraps to make the scarves that I have shown you, or I use them to also make other outfits, or I can sell them to the traders who make pillows with them. So there's a sustainability aspect. I'm also a slow fashion brand, which makes my brand unique because most brands want to sell fast. They want to create things that they'll sell fast, but then the bad thing is the consumers buy those outfits and 10 washes down the line, you have to throw something out. Due to the intricacy of her designs, Mukami has had to be very careful with her pricing as this often than not can determine whether potential clients will purchase a product or service. Um, first of all, um, my main challenge was um, capital, which I had to, I had saved up a lot, but I also found out that even when, when I invested on what I had saved on, I found out that I needed more definitely to invest so I, it's something that i keep investing in over and over and over again secondly and most importantly was um clients there are some clients that won't understand the pricing of the outfits you know because i don't want to underprice my outfits i price them just right i send my clients quotes but people don't understand the pricing until they actually see the final product they see the finishing they see that the design is something that you won't find with somebody else Initially, Mukami had set out on a career as a graphic designer. However, after taking part in a fashion show and getting good feedback, she opted to focus on design. Immediately after the show, Mukami was pleasantly surprised by the orders she received from the people attending. Since then, Mukami has built an impressive repertoire of clients. Besides the show, I was able to, once I made my first outfit for my first client, she uh, she saw that i understood her body shape because african bodies everyone we're not just all hourglass figures you know some of us are top heavy some of us are hips heavy all that so i was able to understand the styling aspect because i got some styling training before i started my brand and then afterwards i was able to use that knowledge as well as my design degree to bind them and create great outfits so my first clients 
was absolutely amazed by how well the outfit fits her because she was heavy like her bust was heavy and she couldn't get any tailor to get it right so when i got it right and then i added the design aspect on top of it she was amazed and she's still my client until now according to various sources kenya's unemployment rate is estimated at 40 percent most of these are young graduates straight from college or university having majored in fashion design she struggled with getting suitable job opportunities first of all it's a very funny factor but it's funny that um entry-level jobs ask for five years experience <laughs> and you know you're, you're a student coming from school so i had such challenges when i was trying to get and then i was being turned down a lot and i was sitting on this talent i've been an artist since i was eight years old and I figured, you know, I can use this art and I've already learned my art and design. It's something that requires my hands really and my brain. I don't really need to be at an office job sitting down and typing things, you know. So I just decided, let me just give it a try. And while I was actually waiting, because I, I, I remember I wasn't really, I didn't wake up in the morning and decide I'd be an entrepreneur today. I was just in between finding a, another job and all that and then I was like you know meanwhile let me just be designing until the orders continued piling up and I was like you know this is taking up most of my days so I, I might as well focus on it. Before venturing out on her own Mukami worked with Konya Loach Styling Management as an assistant fashion stylist. The self-taught graphic designer also worked as a fashion designer at Akinyi Odogo Kenya a high-end fashion brand. The first I got to interact with was Ogake. She was a really great teacher. She has um, her own brand called Og Ogake Bridal. She focuses on bridal. So her training was really great. And at first I wasn't the best student in the class, but as I continued and my, first, my last collection, I remember she asked, she told me that I fit, like I should really continue designing so that really encouraged me the global apparel market is valued at three trillion dollars and accounts for two percent of the world's gross domestic product it is this piece of the pie that mukami is hoping mxm africa will get their fair share the fashion industry it's first of all i will say that it is really growing there are investors that are coming to africa not let alone kenya Many people are now starting to see us as great designers. This is a great time to be a fashion designer. So the industry is really growing. There's a lot of recognition. People are starting to wear made in Kenya, whereas when I was still in uni, people would see you in, a, in an outfit made in Kenya and they'd really think that, you know, why would you, is it made by a tailor? Is it, they wouldn't really, um, encourage or recognize the designer but now people can say you know i'm wearing mxm africa i'm wearing abc and people will actually recognize it so i feel that it's growing a lot mukami mostly uses social media and word of mouth to market her blossoming company apparels at her company cost between 4000 and 20000 kenya shillings the price is dependent on the style of the outfit, man hours, and fabric used, and the quality of fabric used. What happens is um, my outfits are my main source of income, and they're the main area that brings recognition to MXM Africa. But I decided to bring, um, for example, the accessories, the scarves, I have some bags as well. Um, just inspiration, you know, like I am not only focused on clothes. I'm an artist and designer. That's very holistic. There's a lot to look at. So I sometimes want to challenge myself and do something other than clothes. So I do my, my cups. My cups, for example, they're marbled. I wanted to explore the art of marbling on ceramics. And so I did them on my cups. My scarves are, I was finding a way to use um, sustainability in a very chic way. So I was able to use strips of fabric. I cut them into strips and then I made my scarves. So it's just always like I'll wake up sometimes and I'll have new inspiration to do something absolutely out of the box. And I don't believe in putting myself in a box as just a fashion designer because I love art and I love fashion. Mukami currently works with retailers. She sources her fabric and raw materials from various shops in Westlands, Ngara and in town. I would really love to have a studio, like a big studio where I have um, 
my tailors i have my because you know i do custom so it's very it gets hands-on it gets very hands-on so if i have my team that's doing you know the small things like applique beadwork and all that i would love that i'd love my tailors also somewhere where they can also interact and you know i can work with them in one section i would like a place i can take photo shoots a place i can store my fabrics so i'd like a more spacious area than what i have at the moment so what message does mukami kingoria have for aspiring entrepreneurs business is very challenging and i feel that only the bravest people usually take the plunge what I would tell people is that if you have a passion in something, if you want to make it your business, go for it. Don't let anything stop you. Don't be like, oh, what will you do without this job? All that, it just, it doesn't help. And it's always hard, so, and it'll continue being hard. The challenges will always be there, but there's so many benefits to it. Don't go away. The entrepreneur will be right back.